If you've ever stood in front of a jar of sauerkraut or a crunchy dill pickle and thought, wait, are these both fermented or are they pickled or both? You're not alone. Fermenting and pickling might seem like they're just two fancy words for the same thing, soaking vegetables in a jar until they taste tangy. But in reality, they're quite different processes. And those differences go way beyond just the flavor. In fact, they even change how healthy the final food is, how it's stored, and how it tastes on your plate. Today, we're diving into the surprisingly fascinating world of fermenting versus pickling, what sets them apart, what they have in common, and which one you might want to try at home. Let's get into it, right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start by clearing up the biggest misconception. Fermentation and pickling are not interchangeable terms. Sure, some fermented foods are pickled and some pickled foods are fermented, but one does not automatically mean the other. Fermentation is a metabolic process. Basically, it's when microorganisms like bacteria, yeast, or mold break down food components, often sugars or carbohydrates, into other compounds like acids, gases, or alcohol. That's how grapes turn into wine, milk turns into yogurt, and cabbage turns into sauerkraut. Pickling, on the other hand, is a preservation method, typically using an acidic solution, most often vinegar, to give food that sour taste while preventing spoilage. When you pour vinegar over cucumbers and let them sit, you're pickling, not fermenting. Think of it this way. Fermentation is biology. Pickling is chemistry. Fermentation has been around for thousands of years, long before refrigerators existed. Humans discovered that letting the right microorganisms grow in food could make it last longer and taste better. For vegetable fermentation, the star of the show is usually lactic acid bacteria. They naturally live on the surface of fruits and veggies, and when given the right environment, like a salty brine with no oxygen, they start eating the natural sugars in the food and converting them into lactic acid. That acid not only gives fermented foods their tangy flavor, but also acts as a preservative. The magic here is that you don't add acid yourself. It's created during the process. Examples of fermented foods include sauerkraut, kimchi, yogurt, kefir, miso, and sourdough bread. Each has its own set of microorganisms that shape the flavor, texture, and even aroma. And because it's a living process, fermentation often gives you beneficial probiotics, good bacteria that can help support gut health. Pickling takes a different approach. Instead of letting bacteria naturally create acid, you add acid directly, most commonly vinegar. The high acidity creates an environment where harmful bacteria can't survive, which means the food stays safe to eat for a long time. There are two main types of pickling. Quick pickling. You simply heat vinegar with water, salt, sugar, and spices, pour it over your vegetables, and store it in the fridge. You get a tangy flavor almost immediately. Canning pickles. Here you process jars and boiling water to create a vacuum seal, allowing them to be shelf-stable for months or years. While pickling gives you that same sour punch, it doesn't always come with probiotics, since the acidic environment can kill off most live bacteria. That's why your average store-bought vinegar pickles don't offer the same gut health benefits as fermented foods. Fermentation and pickling create different flavor profiles. Fermented foods have a more complex, layered tanginess. That's because fermentation produces not just acids, but also alcohols, esters, and other flavor compounds. 
This complexity is why sourdough bread tastes so different from bread made with commercial yeast, or why kimchi has that deep, funky umami note. Pickled foods, on the other hand, have a cleaner, sharper sourness that comes directly from vinegar. It's bright, punchy, and immediate, but it doesn't have the same depth you'd get from fermentation. Both can be delicious. It just depends on what you're in the mood for. Fermentation often gets more attention for health benefits, and for good reason. Many fermented foods contain live probiotics, microorganisms that can improve gut health, digestion, and even immune function. But here's the catch. Not all fermented foods keep their probiotics by the time they reach your plate. If they've been pasteurized or cooked after fermentation, the beneficial bacteria are gone. That's why refrigerated sauerkraut or kimchi often has more live cultures than shelf-stable versions. Pickling doesn't generally provide probiotics, but it's not without benefits. Vinegar itself can help regulate blood sugar and may aid digestion. Plus, pickling is a great way to preserve vegetables so you can enjoy them year-round, which means more variety in your diet. So, should you ferment or pickle? Honestly, it depends. If you're looking for complex flavors and potential probiotic benefits, go with fermentation. It's great for building depth in dishes. Think tangy kimchi and fried rice or sauerkraut on a Reuben sandwich. If you want quick results, a sharper sourness, or a longer shelf life without refrigeration, pickling is the way to go. Vinegar pickles are perfect for adding a zippy bite to burgers, salads, or sandwiches. And here's a little secret. You don't have to choose. There's room for both in your kitchen. At first glance, fermentation and pickling might seem like small culinary details, but they actually represent two very different food traditions, each with its own history, science, and flavors. Both are time-tested methods for preserving food, both have brought countless flavors to our plates, and both can be done in your own kitchen with just a few simple ingredients. So the next time you bite into something sour and tangy, you'll know whether it's a product of biology or chemistry, and you might just taste the difference. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.